Today we're going to talk about images of muscle tissue. We will talk about the different types of muscles, smooth muscle, skeletal muscle, cardiac muscle, the characteristics of these, identifying uh, components of these, uh, as well as something about innervation of the muscle and uh, detection of stretch with this muscle spindle. Thank you. Images of smooth muscle tissue. Hi, I'm Larry Johnson. I'm a professor in veterinary integrated biosciences at Texas A&M University. Today we're going to talk about muscle. There are different types of muscle. We want to look at histologic identification of muscle. And one of the biggest muscle cells is the skeletal muscle. And you see it's multinucleated cells and nuclei are on the periphery located in through there. And then there's cardiac muscle. Cardiac muscle is branched, unlike this is unbranched. And it's branched and there's smaller cells and the nuclei are in the center, not on the periphery. But both of these are striated. They have striations in them. Uh, the next one is smooth muscle. Here you see a cigar-shaped type cell. It's a smooth muscle cell, nucleus in the center, but it doesn't have striations. And here we can see some of those smooth muscle cells. The other type of cell is myoepithelial cells. And here we see a myoepithelium that would surround like a sweat gland to cause the secretions to occur, forms a little basket around it or a net around it that squeezes down myoepithelium and we also have that in the dilator muscle so if this is the iris and this is the dilator muscle right here we see it right there that is myoepithelium as well so if we look at skeletal muscle in slide 11 we see that the nuclei are located on the periphery and there's more than one nucleus in individual cells. So here we see a longitudinal view. Uh, these are the little capillary right there, but then these are the nuclei of the cells of the muscle fiber. So this is a muscle fiber, a muscle fiber, and a muscle cell is the same thing. And so if we take a look at this slide, the first slide that we're going to see, we can see that these are skeletal muscle fibers, and you can see the striations. You can see the striation, the A and I band, in through there that we'll talk about in a minute. You can see nice striations in through there. See that the nuclei are on the periphery, and it's a multinucleated cell. If you look at it in cross-section, you can't see the striations, but you can see that the nuclei are located on the periphery, as you see in through there. So we can go back to our slide and we can see that basically this is the muscle cell which has the, the, the nucleus on its side. It's got the nucleus on its, um, the nuclei are located uh, on the periphery and inside there you have the myofibrils and a given myofibril has a myofibrils inside there. And so the cross striations are the interactions of the actin and mycin in through here for the A and I band. We can also see capillaries in through there. There's a capillary here, a capillary there, a capillary there, but we can see the nice striations. In it. So increase in muscle mass during exercise results from stimulation of new myofibrils. So you have more myofibrils within the cell. Not the increase in number of cells, but the increase in the size of cells. And so here we can see the different connective tissue layers are outside the muscle is a, a epimesium. Epi is near epimesium. And then you have divisions in there. That's the perimesium. Uh, and then what you have around individual uh, muscle fibers is the endomesium. Epimesium, perimesium, and endomesium. If we look again at slide 11, we can see the epimesium is the connective tissue outside. The perinesium is major connective tissue in through there. And the endomesium is uh, the connective tissue that houses the blood vessels and all that surround individual muscle fibers. And we can see that here on the slide 52, 
This is in the tongue. We can see the striations very nicely in through there. See that the nuclei are on the periphery. They're out in the middle. Uh, we can see endothelial cells of blood vessels. One here, one there, one there, one there. This is a cross-section of that, and you can see that the nuclei of the cells are located uh, on, the, on the periphery. They're not located uh, in the middle of the cell. So if we uh, look at, at that slide, we can see different structures. We can look down here. We can see that the nuclei are on the periphery of these cells. There we are here and here. And we can see the striations uh, in there very nicely. And so if we look here at this one, this is a nice one here. It shows you nice striations of the A and I band. And it shows you cross sections. So this is a longitudinal section, cross section, uh, showing that the nuclei are on the periphery, they're not in the center. We can see the capillaries in through there, there, there. Uh, and here we see a, a gland. This is a mucus secreting uh, gland, not serous, but mucus. There's some nerve in through there, uh, more gland secretions. There's a duct, a hemologic tissue in through there, stratified squamous uh, at, at the surface is what we see. So if we come back, we can see that these muscle fibers, which run through here, we can see the muscle fibers, they uh, actually uh, are composed, these muscle fibers, you can see them here nice and nice, that they are connected to each other uh, by the endomysium. This is the endomysium that connects one to another that allows uh, individual cells put together by connective tissue to make a long muscle. Uh, that you have. So it's in the mesium that we see there. So these cells go in the end, touch one another. They don't, they really interact with the connective tissue in the mesium, and that makes long cells and ultimately a muscle of the body. Also in the, uh, in the mesium is where the blood vessels are located. Major blood vessels come through the perimesium, but individual ones that feed the cells are in the endomesium that we that we see there. And these are little capillaries that we see there in our tongue, our 52 slide, showing you the uh, the capillaries in the connective tissue of the endomysium. And here we can see longitudinal view, uh, a section, and then there's a cross section. You can see the capillaries in through there, the striations, glands. These are fat cells in through here. And so the striations, peripheral nucleus, they're not branched, so rapid contraction, voluntary control, all those are characteristics of skeletal muscle. And if we look at slide 12, we can see uh, the different bands. The A band is uh, anisotrophic. In other words, it modifies, this is where the myosin is located, and it modifies polarized light. The I band is a lighter band. It's isotrophic. It does not modify polarized light. And then there's a Z line. A Z line that comes through the center, and from one Z line to another Z line is a sarcomere. And we can see those. Here's a Z line here and a Z line here. So from here to there is one sarcomere, another sarcomere. So these are the structural and functional units that what happens is uh, the A band uh, gets a wider or thinner of whenever contractions occurs. And so if we look at this slide, histo uh, 12, uh, we'll be able to see these structures. Uh, so let's just take a look at this, histo 12 right here, uh, and we'll be able to see it. This has happened to be right here in this location, a very good location to see. You can see the A band and the I band, and you can see the Z line as well. So this is very good to see. Uh, also, you can see capillaries. This is where capillaries is running in through there in the endomysium. But here we can see nicely, see the Z-line very, very nicely right in through there. So right in through there is a good place to look for, uh, for these characteristics. So if we uh, look at the next one, we can see uh, again the striations. And the striations uh, refer to the band, the A-band or the I-band. 
uh, and the Z line is in the middle of the, or the Z disk, you might say, is in the middle of the I band. And so here we see mitochondria and through an electron micrograph, uh, and you can see the sar uh, sarcomere is from Z line to Z line. Uh, and the Z line is in the middle, or Z disk is in the middle. It looks like a line, it's really you know, a three dimensional structure. And uh, you can see where the actin, where the myosin is, and where the actin would be. And what happens in contraction is the Z line is closer uh, together uh, to contraction of the sarcomere. You can see this is myosin and this is actin, and the Z, uh, the Z line protein holds the actin uh, that uh, allows it to slide in relation to the myosin. So we have A, I, and then. Here we can see a cross section of that. Uh, you can see the blood vessels right in through here, uh, around in the endometrium, and this is a cross section. This is showing you uh, of skeletal muscle. These are uh, this is uh, myofibrils you're seeing in through there. Z line to Z line. Uh, also, we have endoplasmic reticulum. The endoplasmic reticulum uh, carries the calcium associated with that. So that's what we see on those EMs. And for stimulation of the muscle, these are muscle fibers. You can see striations there. You have a motor end plate where the nerve is interacting with these cells. Uh, in addition to stimulation of the cells, uh, we have receptors in cells. And this is a skeletal muscle, muscle spindle. And the muscle spindle is encapsulated. That is, it has connective tissue. This is connective tissue through there and it has muscle fibers inside and you can see the muscle fiber here here and here uh, inside there and so whenever the muscle stretches uh, it uh, identif uh, tells the nerves that it's stretched so the tissue can see that so here we can see a longitudinal view of one of these so these dark structures here are are the muscle cells themselves that are inside the capsule and so the capsule is connective tissue uh, containing uh, containing the, mild, uh, the muscle fibers that are in there, and that makes a muscle spindle. So you have intercapsular fibers. Those are muscle fibers that we can see here. So if we take a look at this uh, specimen uh, 13, we can see uh, this one. Take a look at that right quick we can uh, if we take a look at this right in through this area we can see there's basically brown things here are the muscle spindle and you, you can see one so there's a capsule around here and here are the dark structures that we see are indeed uh, the muscle fibers uh, and I'm going to show you in a minute where you can see it in, in striation so that's a longitudinal view of that and we should be able to see right here are cross sections of it. So you can see these are cross sections of the muscle fibers or muscle cells that is encapsulated in through there. So that's a muscle spindle to detect stretch. So I'm going to uh, take a look up here for this one and right in through there. If we take a look at this, now here we see the striations in the muscle cells themselves, right? And there's a capsule, and this is a muscle fiber inside the capsule. And you see how far these striations are apart? It's the same over here. So these are striations of the fibers or cells. Fibers and cells are the same thing that's inside the capsulated structure. So it's muscle spindle that, that we're seeing. The, uh, another kind of muscle is smooth muscle. Uh, and here we see this move muscle cells or individual cigars and you can see them like this or in cross section you see that the nucleus is actually in the center not on the periphery but in the center and also these are small cells and uh, actually there is a PAS positive uh, basement membrane about around smooth muscle cells and that's what we see here so uh, we see the the basement membrane the green here are the nuclei of the cells but you see the basement membrane around there and so when we're going to see the muscle layer for uh, is the urinary bladder and so we see longitudinal cells you see the nuclei are scattered throughout because they're in individual cells the cells are small 
and these are cross sections of cells and you can see that nucleus is pretty much in the center of this so muscle cells are fusiform tapered at the end single or maybe maybe more than one nucleus but not more than two centrally located no striations hence smooth and it's involuntary we don't you find it in sphincters you find it in the constrictor of the eye so if we take a look at 35 which is uh, we can see lo and behold we can see some longitudinal views of smooth muscle this is cross sections of smooth muscles I can't really see individual cell limits in through there but you see these uh, smooth muscles uh, in through here and these are so these are smooth muscle uh, cells these are each nucleus part of a different of a different cell and we can see though this is in the bladder so this is transitional epithelium that we see connective tissue below and then this is muscle we can see the muscle uh, it's a connective tissue collagen uh, bundles in through there of extracellular matrix you see the fibroblasts in through there but these are uh, smooth muscle cells very characteristic of smooth of smooth muscle cells and so the nucleus is in the center uh, of the cell in the center of the cell could be two nucleus but we use two nuclei but nucleus is just just one so if we go back and look at at this uh, we'll see that we can also see it smooth muscle layers here in the appendix so we're looking at this smooth muscle layer this is the mucosa submucosa and the muscularis externa that's what we're seeing and here we can see that there's actually a couple layers inner circular one and outer longitudinal one so we should be able to see longitudinal view uh, and cross section of these things so uh, this is a layer of the gut responsible for the contraction and mixing of luminal fluids uh, and for paracelsis to occur to move the fluid forward that's the function of this and so if we look at slide uh, 63 uh, that's what we'll see we can see these are we're right there in the wall here and so these are individual smooth muscle cells now characteristic of smooth muscle cells uh, whenever the tissue is processed the cell contracts a little bit and as a consequence you have this corkscrew nucleus so you see that several of these nuclei are not just look like a cigar they look like a twisted cigar like there and there and there that we can see very characteristic and see this is a lighter pink than the collagen so this is smooth muscle and this is collagen smooth muscle collagen these are longitudinal views these are cross sections uh, of these I can really can't see the limits uh, limits of the cells that we see there you see a little bit of line in through there I can't really see to show you that that they are that they are indeed one cell one nucleus per cell but here we can see the characteristic corkscrew shaped nucleus of uh, smooth muscle cells so if we uh, uh, here we see smooth muscle and smooth muscle does have actin and mycin it's just not arranged in a sarcomere uh, configuration and actin and mycin slide against one another just like they do in skeletal muscle or striated muscle but they're not organized you see every so often you see the mycin and you see the actin another characteristic uh, of smooth muscle is you have these densities on the, on the sides in through there and sometimes the densities inside the cell as well but here we can see the filaments and what these densities are is that the actin and mycin changes its length but the intermediate filaments doesn't change their length so this is the relaxed state and this is a contracted state and when it's contracted it makes the nucleus corkscrew shape you see the nucleus has changed the size in through there but uh, those densities that we were seeing and here we can see the densities here 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 and you can see the densities here on this uh, fluorescence 
uh, which are detecting these densities. And these are where the, where the different fibers uh, interact. Uh, actin, mycin, and intermediate filaments interact. So if we saw skeletal muscle on the side, you would see there would be six actin around it. One, two, three, four, five, six around each myosin. This is in cross-section of the filaments. In smooth muscle, you see the myosin and actin, they're just not organized in a defined pattern. And this gives you smooth that doesn't have striations this one is organized in sarcomeres that give you striations. The other type of muscle is cardiac muscle, uh, and it's branched, and the nucleus is in the center, and uh, it's striated. It's one of the things that we can see. You can see where one cell ends and another one begins, and nucleus is in the center. Uh, and where one cell attaches to another one, you have these intercalated discs. So these discs here are where one cell ends and another one begins. Uh, that's the function there. There's also gap junctions there to communicate uh, between different ones to tell them what uh, when to contract. Here we see pulmonary artery, actually in the lung of a rat. And we can see this is the nucleus of uh, one of these uh, cardiac muscle cells. You can see the striations and you can see the intercalated disc. So the cardiac muscle is not only in the heart. Sometimes it extends into the lungs there with the, uh, the pulmonary artery coming out. And here you can see the intercalated disc there very nicely. These guys here, these rods here are mitochondria. You need a lot of mitochondria uh, in, in, in muscle. Nucleus, uh, mitochondria. And so the one that we're supposed to see, 14, or see the heart, you can see the intercalated disc right there, 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 there. This is where one cell ends and another one begins. And so here you can see the fascial adherence, macular adherence, and that this makes that uh, disc that we're seeing connecting from one cell uh, to, uh, to another cell. So if we take a look at, at this slide, 14, uh, we can see... Uh, cardiac cell. So the nucleus is in the center of the cell and the cell is striated. You can see the striations uh, very nicely in through there. These are capillaries, the red blood cells in capillaries. You can see the endothelial cells. Endothelial cell nucleus right there. Another endothelial cell and there's the red blood cells inside there. But you can see the striations there that A and I bands. However, you also see these darker bands. These are the intercalated discs. You do not see those in the case of skeletal muscle. And you might know that these cells branch. Unlike skeletal muscle, it does not branch. So this is cardiac muscle. Again, capillaries in through there, a little venules in through there, maybe small veins in through there, in the, in through uh, the tissue, but you see the striations very nicely in, uh, in there. So that pretty much concludes uh, our presentation uh, on the, the images of muscle tissue. Thank you.